Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for the Civil Engineering video. Today our lecture is about the design steps for a beam. In this lecture, I will cover all the steps that are required for designing a beam. And let's consider this any simply supported beam of length A. And we want to design this beam. So what are the steps that are required for designing this beam? So let's start with different steps for designing a beam. The first and most important step is Assume a section. It means that first step we have to assume any section of our beam. This is the length of the beam, so we should assume the width of the beam B and the height of the beam. This is assuming a section for this beam. And this assumption of the section of the beam depends on the, your length of the beam. Mostly this dimension, the width and height plays an important role because you have to select carefully, not select too much small and not selecting too much large than the required values. So this mostly depends on the experience of a designer but also there are different codes which provides the uh, rough rule to determine the uh, width and height of the beam. But these values are dependent on the length of the beam and the loads coming on the beam. The second step is The second step is also important in designing a beam which is about to determine the loads on your beam that is the dead load and the live load you should take all the loads that are coming on your beam and should take in consideration of your design for example there is a load there is a beam simply supported beam and you consider that this is a uniformly distributed load acting of uh, let's suppose of your uh, slave acting on this beam or on your, of your secondary beam of your masonry wall coming on this beam so you should consider all the loads on this beam it also may be a concentrated load a pointed load or, we, or, or uniformly distributed load so in the second step is about the consideration of the loads on your beam all types of the load that are coming on your beam the third step is the third step is to determine the bending moment diagram after after you have the beam with the length L and the all types of load coming on your beam then you can find the support reactions this will be support reactions for your beam and you can draw the bending moment diagram and by bending moment diagram we can go to the next step so the third step is to find the bending moment diagram of your beam. The fourth step is After determining the bending moment diagram, we can find the area of steel required. And from the area of steel required, we can find the number of steel bars. But these steel bars are the main bars in a beam. If this is the cross section of the beam, this is the width and this is the height of the beam. So these are the main bars, the compression and tension. So these area of steel bars which we found from the, from the bending moment diagram will be the main bars area and number of steel bars will be the main bars. For example, this compression, this tension and compression reinforcement bars. These will not correspond to the shear reinforcement. I mean the stirrups. The fifth step is to determine the shear force diagram. So the fifth step is to determine the shear force diagram. We can also draw the shear force and bending moment diagram together and then we can find the respective area of steel required. So after determining the shear force diagram, it is important to find out the spacing of the stirrups and to determine the diameter of the stirrups required for the shear reinforcement. So the next step will be after determining the shear force diagram we have to provide the shear reinforcement that is in form of stirrups. So we have to design the stirrups diameter and also the spacing of the stirrups is that important for resisting the shear stresses. Now the next step is very important in the designing of the beam.
the seventh step would be to check the deflection criteria. Our beam deflection should be smaller than the deflection recommended by different codes. For example, for dead load, for dead load, the deflection should be smaller than this value, L by 20, 240, where L is the length of the beam, this L. And for this is for dead load. And for live load, it is L by 360. So, our deflection of the beam should be smaller than this value. It should fit this deflection criteria or it should match the deflection criteria otherwise you have to revise the whole design of the beam. So, for the dead load, we, have, we, try, to def, we have try to maintain our deflection less than the L by 240 and for the lab load, we try to maintain the deflection less than the length over 360. So after checking the deflection criteria of a beam, the next step would be that the number 8 step would be to check for the torsional stresses because there are some stresses which are created in the, along the length of the beam which we call is the torsional stresses so we should also look for the torsional stresses and we should check the beam for the torsional stresses that it should not limit the torsional stresses that are recommended by the different codes. The next step would be to So after performing the 8 step, the next step is to revise the section and the stress requirement if they are needed. So if we require the reinforcement, for example for torsion stresses or maybe for deflection criteria, we should increase the amount of reinforcement. So again we have to revise the all number of steps and provide the required reinforcement. So the ninth step is just to revise the section and if we require the reinforcement, so we should provide the amount of reinforcement that are needed and the last step is to carry out the detailing so after performing all these steps the last step is to perform the detailing of the beam and detailing of the beam include the spacing of the diameter we should provide the symmetric spacing symmetric spacing between the steel bar for example this spacing is should be same between the steel bars and also between the between the uh, stirrups we should provide the same spacing but sometimes we provide the less spacing between the steel bars and the mid section and at the end section we provide the more spacing between the stirrups bar so it depends on the detailing and detailing play an important role in the designing of the beam because it increases the ductility of a beam system if we do the correct detailing. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.